Greetings to all present authorities, UNDESA representatives, especially Renata Kamchaska, my friend Ignacio Socias, Alex Vasquez, EFFD collaborators, Piotr Galbeski, and UNINOVE researchers at University of Nine Julio in San Paulo, Brazil. To scholars of the Institute for Family Policies of Mexico and the European Network, ELISA, to Selena Liao, Vice Governor of the Federal District of Brasilia, and Chris Williams, Director of the UN Habitat Office. It is crucial for us adherents of the Venice Charter to celebrate and honor World Cities Day together. Established by the UN General Assembly in 2013 to promote the interest of the international community and cooperation among countries in addressing urbanization challenges and contributing to sustainable urban development worldwide. Since its establishment, the general theme of World Cities Day is Better City, Better Life. And this is also an important theme for the Venice Charter, which shares the recognition by the Human Rights Council of the Human Right to a safe, clean, healthy and sustainable environment. The cities and territories that adhere to the Venice Charter act in this direction with concrete actions for cities that focus on the human being and the family with their needs and the needs and rights of the most vulnerable, differently abled citizens, children or elderly people. A city that respects the environment, capable of providing services, transportation, activities in the name of the circular economy and of a waste-free development, which takes into account the rights of everyone. In 2024, it will be 30 years since the establishment of the International Day of Families, which is celebrated every May 15th to spread greater awareness globally about the social, economic and demographic processes that involve families around the world. The family is still central to development processes, central to the life of our societies and cultures. I believe that next year's anniversary should find ample space precisely because of the importance that the family has in the challenges towards the cities of tomorrow. Currently, cities generate 80% of global wealth and represent the places where over half of the world's population lives a figure that is expected to increase by 70% by 2050, making urbanization one of the mega trends of the 21st century, an epochal challenge that cannot be won without the enhancement of the family. According to the UN report, the challenge of slums 2023, approximately one in six individuals, nearly one billion people, reside in more than 250,000 slums that are dispersed across the globe. In developing nations, the percentage accounts for 43% of the urban population, whereas in developed nations, it stands at 6%. This study expects that by 2050, the population of slums will reach over 3 billion people, which is 30% of the projected population of 9.7 billion in 2050. Behind these numbers, there are faces of women, children, elderly people, disabled citizens. There is also a lot too much poverty, a lot too much violence. One person in 10 today suffers from hunger and one person in three does not have access to adequate sources of food. Rightly, the experts who bring the Venice Charter to life have positioned a proper and nourishing diet at the heart of their contemplation in the previous year, because hunger is one of the most devastating illnesses that afflict our planet, along with conflicts, mistreatment of women and children, and poverty. An esteemed Italian author stated that in a metropolis, one does not derive pleasure from the seven or 67 marvels, but rather from the response it provides to your query. And presently, the primary concern of the Venice Charter is how to ensure a respectable existence for all, encompassing its entire population. Halfway now achieving the goals set by the 2030 Agenda. The accumulated delay globally leaves a lot of perplexity even if we must not give up. On the contrary, cities, regions and territories can and must be the true engines of change. 
The 2030 Agenda upholds its ideal value and values, but also encompasses concrete actions that we must diligently implement. In the era of globalization, no country is able to save itself alone, but a network of support and solidarity like that of the cities and territories adhering to the Venice Charter is mandatory. We can exchange best practices, discuss among ourselves, and this means conveying successful ideas and initiatives, practical proposals that are grounded in everyday reality, solutions to the daily problems of living, dwelling, and working in eco-sustainable cities tailored to the needs of families and the most vulnerable. The objectives of the 2030 Agenda represent shared goals of humanity on a range of fundamental issues for the advancement of the battle against poverty, the eradication of hunger, and the mitigation of climate change, as well as the significant demographic challenge. The future is at stake on these topics, including sustainable development that finds its loss in the family and in the city, as well as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Midway through 2030 agenda, it's even tougher and extremely challenging for cities. But this does not mean that humanity must give up its great goals. Why we want to believe in a future of peace. And this peace must first be born in eco-sustainable cities and territories, based on families, respectful of humans and the environment. Thank you for your patience in listening to me, but also for the commitment you put in to give the planet and its inhabitants concrete hopes for a better life for all.